Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Espoir David, and today I want to play a game that was part of the 72 hour murder boy game jam called Dream Reflection. I am Espoir, it means hope in French. I see myself laying on the grass alone. The tall tree shields and caresses me so gently. The sky is full of pure white clouds, blending into the restless gloom. Open arms embrace into air, and I swim into the sea of flowers. That sounds lovely. The birds are calling to me. What I see is no longer strange. The smell of leaves are floating around my nose. I take a deep breath, and my lungs feel pleasure. The scent of leaves, the scent of nectar, the scent of wood. The sense of nature. It's so beautiful. I wish I could stay here forever, in my own fairy tale world, with flower companions by my side. I. I love it so much. But I can't stay, can I? <laughs> but the dream won't last any longer. The minute hand of the clock is rotating. I don't know what time it is, how long I've been laying down in the bedroom. Outside the sky is white, not murky, not blue with the sun, just white, like a reimagining of the mind. Study, fame, property, social, and family lineage. But that's his daily life, so he doesn't hesitate to continue living with the honor of being the son of a family that embraces him. Filled with gold rings, diamonds, and money, the birdcage is his home. When he stands close to the mirror, the figure reflecting him from head to toe is a figure of a man in his mid-twenties. Although he had the traits of an adult, elegant, calm, and dignified, his soul was still the same as that of a teenager. A smile appears on his face, even though it isn't a real happy smile. It gives him comfort in his heart that today, surely, nothing bad will happen. But everything is not as he believes. He has dealt with a lot of this circle of life, that which makes him unable to break the cycle by himself. But if he can escape, where will he go? It's hard to tell. After everything he had been through, his mood was in turmoil. His burned hands and bruises were covered with bandages. His wounds were etched into his face. Bandages could not cure his soul. His body trembled with a longing to be hugged, but the embrace was from none other than himself. His fingers press hard into his flesh, as if he wanted to dye it in hot red blood. The wound was so painful that he couldn't speak. He bit and squeezed those fragile little lips. Oh dear, it's so painful. Who's going to take care of this lifeless body? Tears are falling down his face but he knew that the answer was still unknown. So he sighed. Gosh, you know what? I've had enough. Without saying anything, he threw his shoes and socks out of his sight. His eyes started to grow heavy, so he quietly laid down on the bed and fell asleep, suppressing his heart and trying to forget those painful feelings of the mind and body. I don't know what's going on here, but it sounds very sad, and it sounds like that young man needs a hug. Around midnight. <laughs> uh oh. Oh dear. A groaning sound was echoing, entering his ears. It sounded like a baby whimpering nearby, but somehow he didn't know where it was from. He didn't want to get out of bed and call for his servants to find that crying child quickly, so he ignored it but the cry grew louder, enough to be heard throughout the house. One minute, two minutes, five minutes, ten minutes. He couldn't sleep with his eyes closed. There wasn't any sound on the other side of the door, other than a baby's cry. He knew no one was looking for the child. That cry made him spring right up. He didn't know what to do with this situation, other than sit and think to himself. Who would let that child cry out there? Where's the servant? Without hesitation, he reached for the alarm to signal his servants, and he rang the bell. Somebody get that baby! 
No response. Uh-oh. So he clicked one more time. But still no response. The silence surrounds him. He rings it more, from time to time, five, six, or even seven times. His patience was nearing its limit, so he decided to get out of bed and find the child by himself. But at that moment, he remembered that he never had any children or siblings in his house. <gasps> was he hallucinating? Was it a ghost? Or was he just having a nightmare? But it didn't matter. He found the flashlight from the wardrobe, then grabbed them and tried to turn it on. I hope it still works. Mm -mm. Thank God, it does still work. Let's go. Let's find that baby. He sighed silently in relief and walked away. But before he could step out of the room, he noticed that the old blue door that sat across from his bed was replaced by a strange green door different from any other door in his house. It looks old, like it hasn't been used in years. Guess I have no choice. You're not... you're not suspicious that a door in your room is not the door that was always in your room. He hesitated, but slowly touched the doorknob to open it. Eh... <laughs> The cold wind blowing towards him was enough to send chills down his spine. He tried shining his flashlight around, but there was nothing but emptiness there. This must be a nightmare. He'll get lost before he wakes up. Wake up. Wake up. But he had no choice but to keep walking into the void. <coughs> he didn't know how long he followed the child's cry, but the flashlight still shined through the void. Its light never dimming. It was like there was no walls or doors, nor paths. The crying gradually started to become clearer than before. A shadow faded and then appeared as an image of a younger boy hugging himself, shaking. The boy bowed his head to cover it. That ugly, wet face. Someone that looks like himself. Then he saw the figure look like a little child in front of him, his chest getting itchy, but he also looked familiar. In his heart, he felt the sharpest pain that he had ever felt, the rhythm of his heartbeat making him uncomfortable, sadly. He clutched his shirt over his chest to suppress this feeling. The boy looked pitiful. I think I've seen that boy somewhere. Have I met him before? But I ran all the way here. I can't get out of here without him. But first, I should go ask the child. He put his hand on the child's shoulder and asked, Hey there, little one. Why are you crying here? <laughs> it's okay. Don't be afraid. I see you're lost, but everything's fine now. I'm here. Let me lead you to my place safely, alright? <laughs> hey, did you hear me? There was no response but the resounding cries continued to scatter in all those directions. He tried to grab the child, but he was unable to. His hands phased through like the boy was a ghost, and in front of his eyes was a newfound illusion. In front of him was a familiar figure, a woman. She was a slim, beautiful lady, but she was also very strict and well-groomed, with jade-green eyes. His face started to turn blue. His mouth twitched, as if he saw the shadow of his fear right in front of him. It was difficult to open his mouth to speak in front of the figure that was supposed to be his mother. M mother mm -mm. Son, you did the wrong training session again. I'm very disappointed about you. I told you over and over again, and you still make mistakes. That's, That's it. it. Give, Give me your me hand. hand. Right, right now. now. Having no time to react, the boy's hand suddenly spread open. He tried to pull his hand back, but his entire body did not listen to him. The woman picked up a stick, then grabbed his hand, and forcefully hit the palm of his hand. 
Oh no, the baby. Don't hit the baby. Mother, I, I know I was wrong. I know. I didn't mean it, mother. I'll try it again, mother. Please, please forgive me. Don't, don't ever, ever call, call me mother. mother. I don't, I like, don't kids like kids who are failures, failures like, like you. you. The mother took a pot of boiling water and poured it into the boy's small hand. The steam quickly spread in the air as memories began to flash in his head again. Ah! Lady, if you weren't a ghost, I'd be calling Child Protective Services right now. Ah! Mother! Please, stop! Burns attached themselves to his body, hands, mind, and memories, scarring him in dreams and in reality. His consciousness became uncontrollable, unable to distinguish between reality and dream. He held his hand in despair, ignoring the burns, crying in agony. Mother, I know I was wrong. Please forgive me. Please, mother. He had never felt a stronger pain, one that made him want to explode, break apart, and end himself quickly. He can't save himself from disaster and call for help. This will keep happening over and over. Why, then, doesn't he go end that person's life? Right. Why didn't I do that sooner? How can I deal with that woman? He looked back at his hand. Before, it had been holding a flashlight, but it now appeared to be holding a sharp knife. When? How? No. I don't care anymore. Without hesitation, he stood up slowly, feeling heavy, much like a lifeless puppet, his voice saying it to his beloved mother one more time, like he was about to collapse. Hmm? What are you what are doing, doing with that with knife? knife? What are you going to do, stab me? Says Lady Who was suddenly stabbed. Mother! I tried all my best to be a perfect child that you deserved, but you treated me like I'm an abandoned child. You taught me everything. But I still don't know what is love. Treating someone like me with your violence? Abused? You think that I'm nothing to you. But in the end, you're still my lovely mother. But I think I'm done now. He expressed all of the remaining emotions and ran straight into that woman, screaming in pain, stabbing through her countless times, over and over again, until she could no longer move. He believed it was all over. Gah! That's probably not the best way to solve your problem. Up. 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 Oh dear. Okay, I think that's enough. Something caught his eye. From that woman's feet, countless sprouts sprang up. The flower buds bloomed, beckoning to be reborn into a new life, clinging on the skin, to the muscles, to the blood vessels, to the bone marrow, all around that woman. Then, a tree started to slowly grow uncontrollably and horribly fast. It looked no different from other strange parasitic diseases, spreading from the inside out of the body, living inside the subject, and killing them without mercy. The beauty of a new life confused and frightened him, causing him to collapse and move away from the woman. Their eyes looked straight at each other. It's almost impossible to look away. Before the woman was covered by those flowery creatures, she gazed at him with empty and lifeless eyes. Blood began to leak from her eyes, staining her face and its maternal beauty. Instead, the woman stood up and approached Lei step by step, but it wasn't long before she fell down in front of him. They both stared at each other until they were dumbfounded. Ma'am, you've got a tree? grown out of you? I don't think you should be walking around. M mother? He knelt down, gently approaching his mother. He checked her heartbeat and for any signs of breath, but they were all traumatized after all he'd caused. The knife covered in blood began to fall to the ground at his feet. Mother, please open your eyes. Please. Why won't you open your eyes after I stabbed you multiple times? I... I didn't mean it. 
He shook her body in fear and panic. No matter how many times he tried to help his mother wake up, she wouldn't. He hoped that this was just a nightmare. But why did it look so real? He suddenly felt an unprecedented clarity. Wounds, blood, flesh, mother's dress, everything so real. The smell of rotten flesh gradually spread. He couldn't stand the stench and vomited. Some dreams might come true. There's no time to run away from reality. That's all you want. Open your real self up. I might be just some other person in your eyes. But don't worry. We have a lot of time to figure it out. Dear Layton. Huh? Uh, uh, my fancy bed. His heart was beating non-stop. He touched his chest to calm himself down. After the nightmare, he was sweating all the way down to his feet, panting like he had run a marathon for the first time. He looked around, and he couldn't find that old blue door anymore. Was that a dream? Leighton thought to himself and sighed in relief. Hmm. From the other side of the door, there were whispers and footsteps passing by. He got out of bed to check. After opening the door, he saw that there were countless people outside, surrounding him. They did not notice him at first, so he quietly passed through the crowd. Suddenly, someone stopped him from going through. Master, please, don't come over here. What's wrong, Robert? You look so pale. Is something wrong over there? I'm afraid. It's really hard to say. But if you're truly prepared, I will tell you. Sure, Robert. I'm ready. What is it? Uh, your mother. She passed away by murder. What? I'm terribly sorry for your loss. We called the police hours ago, but we didn't find the culprit yet. I know it's hard to say. Please go back to your room. I will make you some tea to help you feel better. Uh, thank you, Robert, but I'll be all right. Oh, if you say so, Master. I'll take you back there. With nothing more to say, the butler led Leighton to his room to make sure no one attacked him like they did his mother. Then I beg your pardon. Butler, don't leave me all alone. I had a scary dream. After the butler left, Leighton stood there silently, holding his face and trembling with excitement. I... I killed her. <laughs> Leighton, is this something you should be laughing about? <laughs> I've made it. I did it. I don't have to see that woman again. I'm finally free. <laughs> Is it sinking in now, Leighton? You good, fam? Over ten years after his mother's death, he graduated from university in pharmacy and agriculture. Then he started moving to his own house, far, far away from his father's place. Currently, he's built the dream that he's desired, and opened a rather large project that he hoped would succeed some day. Or that's what he thought. Mm -hmm. Hello? Come in. Good evening, Master. I came here to report the schedule for tomorrow. Thank you, Hugh. So tell me, what's in the schedule that you have? Well, there's one interview for tomorrow afternoon. The interviewer this time is Espoir Bridget. Hey, that's me they're talking about. I am Mrs. Espoir Bridget. Espoir Bridget, huh? They're the most recent journalist newcomer, right? Yes, they are. Would you like me to decline the interview? Hmm. Master, I like it. Sir? <laughs> No, never mind. Just let them in. I would like to meet them soon. Like, they spent so much time for coming here. I feel bad for them. 
Not to mention they've only graduated from the college for a while, so... I hope they don't mind the state of my project when they come here. So I'll treat them kindly. For now. What do you mean, for now? I see. Also, do you still have to talk with them about your job over there? Leighton smiled, glancing at him. Without any response, Hugh already understood it. You could say that, but I'm almost done talking to them. You can go now. Yes, thank you. Good night, Master. <coughs> what have you got planned, Leighton? Well then, where were we? Leighton's malevolent laughter echoed in the basement. Voiceless cries of unnamed bodies begged him to release them from this dreadful place. Shining chains gripped each of their limbs. All over their bodies were tree parts and severed flesh, just like how his mother did it. At first, I did not intend to do this to you, but I'm afraid you're trying to break into my house without my permission. What a pity. For example, like stealing plants or flowers, property, destroying material things, especially the products I invented in the basement of the greenhouse. You know what? I've been thinking that I should call the police or request you to leave. But I'm really bored. So I grabbed you here for some reason. Do you want to join my business project? <laughs> You better not do that to Espoir, Espoir Bridget. Sir, I did. Oh, okay. Okay. Close the game on me. All right. I, I see. I, I, oh boy. Oh, oh boy. Well, that was Dream Reflection, uh, a short game made for the 72-hour murder jam. If you, if you would like to see if Mr. Layton gets up to more shenanigans, you can follow the developer as there will be a link to this game in the description. How dare you use your, your, your botany and agriculture for evil, sir. But anyway, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Take care of yourself, have a great night, and remember, there is always hope.